Welcome back, everybody, to the channel again. It's me, Max Ogier, with more energy and natural resources stuff for you, as always. If you enjoy hearing about energy and natural resources, oil, gas, minerals, mining, and all of the significant and actual important things of the sort, as opposed to whatever's being pushed in your face these days, which is usually just Trump's Twitter feed and other trivial nonsense, then please subscribe now, hit the bell icon. This is definitely one of the places for you if you're tired of all the other stuff. So, how much oil is left out there? Undiscovered. Well, it's obviously a range of possible values, as with almost anything unknown. What is relatively known, however, is that, for one, most of it is certainly offshore, and for two, most of it is also either in environmentally extreme regions, primarily the Arctic, or in less politically stable regions. So, to begin, right at home, rather than just close to home, my home specifically, we'll start with Alaska. Alaska is one of our mixed locations, harboring a huge amount of unexplored territory both offshore and still a lot onshore as well. Now, even in the small amount of total area already explored, just on the north slope, Alaska's proven more than quite prolific. Prudhoe Bay at 26 billion barrels, discovered back in the 50s and 60s, with other decent formations being found sprinkled around it since, 1 billion here, 2 billion there, half a billion back over there, you get it. Now, albeit slowly, exploration is finally beginning to move outward again, with recent discoveries being made further west of Prudhoe, including a 6 billion barrel field being discovered in Smith Bay, so there's more than obviously quite a bit left up here. Some of the big industry players like Shell, we're even getting ready uh, for offshore Arctic development up here off the northwestern Alaska coast, where they were suspecting between 6 and 10 billion barrels in the particular area that they were going for. But they backed out when the price collapsed. Many of them are back, however, but not exactly for price reasons. Oil companies are also beholden to the need for corporate reserve replenishment, since how much they own in their own oil reserves, the total of all their owned fields and areas worldwide, and thus the total amount they can claim they'll be able to produce into the future, kind of heavily affects uh, potential investor decisions and the attitude of their shareholders. So that's why you'll see more than often enough instances of them being willing to go after something and uh, develop some fields, even if it's either barely going to break even or even if it looks like it's slightly going to cost more money than it will make. Because to a certain extent, they don't exactly have a choice. They do have to uh, keep replenishing uh, their, their reserves that they have on file uh, or else, you know, they're going to lose investors. Now back to it, all in all, despite not being the sort of near-enclosed or semi-enclosed area like the Gulf of Mexico or the Persian Gulf, where you'd usually see such enormous results, Alaska's proved to and likely still does hold more than its fair share. And initially, I had put the expected remaining amount around a rough average of probably 55 billion barrels remaining undiscovered, However, that was previously, so minus Smith Bay, plus other smaller recent discoveries. So down to around roughly probably another 47 billion barrels-ish still lying around up here in the state's territory. Now, as we move on to other places, some I'll give you a rough average estimate, a number to center around. Others I'll give you a general range of value potentials. So hopping over across the Bering Sea to a location where we're going to use a range, Eastern Russia. Eastern Russia, you can see on the topographic map, has quite a large, low-lying, semi-enclosed area with a lot of green flags and good indicators, but it has been all but untouched compared to Russia's 
west and western central, primarily just because of distance, isolation, and climate. But whether or not it ever actually gets fully explored or not, I suspect that in this eastern fold of Russia, there's anywhere between 30 to 60 billion barrels out under that tundra. Now, right nearby to it is a place with a much wider number range, the Sea of Okutsk. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, so I apologize if I got it wrong. Which is also untouched, but it also has a bit more uncertainties mixed into it, even though it does have some initially uh, positive-looking indicators about it. However, many offshore areas tend to have more uncertainty to them. The Sea of Okutsk also could have almost as much as the onshore eastern Russia, nearly 60 billion barrels at about 55, I'd say, for a ceiling, but also might have as low as only 15. And continuing down the eastern coast of Asia, we get to a politically heated area, the South China Sea. Everybody wants a part of the South China Sea. But China has been making it pretty clear that when they say uh, they want their part, they mean the whole thing. Now, how much is out there? Well, some agencies estimate only around 12 to 16 billion barrels. Some infinite oil type people uh, claim over 200. My placement's on a range between 10 and 35. Who's going to end up getting it? Well, that'll depend uh, on China and whether any of the smaller countries surrounding the South China Sea actually want to try that fight. But I think we all know who's going to be getting it in the end. Now, following China's line of interest, we jump over to Myanmar or Burma. Is there a lot of oil in Burma or Myanmar? Well, China certainly seems to think so and they are already getting ready to receive it. Multiple rounds of exploration are getting ready to start in and offshore of the country, and China is going to be setting up pipelines from Myanmar into southern China. Now, Myanmar has a decently long extent of offshore area and has a semi-enclosed low-lying region carving right up through the country's center. I actually think Myanmar's gonna end up having a lot more than everyone expects. Still a range though, semi-wide range, uh, but a range of between 20 to 60 billion barrels offshore and onshore combined. And nearby Bangladesh has had almost as little interest or exploration as Burma, but as India's oil hunger keeps growing, that's pretty certain to change. Not as much as Myanmar, but I think... Onshore and off, Bangladesh probably has between 8 and 25 billion barrels. Whether or not it ever all gets found or developed. Now we're going to hop our way down past Indonesia, down over to Papua New Guinea. They have had rounds of exploration in the past, sort of off and on with their exploration. Nothing really constant, but they're right there in the same setup as Indonesia, just with not as much territory. However, even with their vastly smaller territory, they're still pretty unexplored. So Papua New Guinea, I suspect, probably still has another four, maybe up to 10 billion barrels lying around there waiting to be found. And from them, we take an even further jump south down to Australia, taking a nice kangaroo hop all the way down to the untouched Australian Bight a decently promising offshore area where there's been quite a bit of interest from the industry, but environmental concerns and regulations from the Australian government have halted would-be exploration several times. But regardless of whether or not it ever even gets touched, there's probably anywhere between 8 and 20 billion offshore there. And over in New Zealand, we have a split playing field. Offshore east-southeast, fanning out, and offshore west to northwest, fanning out. Both are pretty large, outstretched areas, and though there's no real enclosure around them, there's still a semi-decent expectancy, just not that high, 
New Zealand hasn't actually allowed any exploration, but they've started hinting very recently that they may be ready to. West offshore New Zealand, I suspect, has the lower amounts, uh, probably maybe between 4 and 10 billion. Offshore East probably has a little deal more, maybe between 6 and 16. Now, onwards over to Africa. And whereabouts to start within Africa? Where else but the main event? Somalia. Out of all the unexplored and untouched areas in Africa, Somalia almost certainly has more than anybody else. Somalia is going to be one of the uh, upcoming big players as we move into the future. Because they have a lot. Now, it might not appear that way at first, uh, just looking at the geological setup and everything, but they are right nearby to the most prolific area on Earth, the Persian Gulf offshore and onshore region. Now, while Somalia doesn't have the near-perfect, almost enclosure setup of the Persian Gulf, Somalia used to be part of a somewhat similar one. It actually used to be connected to Yemen and Oman, with whom it shares a lot of the same sedimentary geology, and with whom it probably formed at least a semi-enclosure structure. So, how much do I think there is? Anywhere between 30 and 90 billion barrels. Now down on the southern end of the continent, we go by Mozambique and Madagascar. Mozambique was initially looking really great oil-wise, but as of recently, it's been appearing to be more gas than anything else but there's still a fair potential there. And of course, with gas, there's always condensate. Madagascar is basically untouched and everything there is gonna be offshore. Mozambique, I feel having the potential still for between five and 20 billion barrels, though likely closer to the lower end of that now, looking at it. And Madagascar with a lower potential, likely only having between three and 12. Then working our way back up along the west coast, we pass by Namibia, a country much more known for its wildlife and its uranium mines than for any kind of fossil hydrocarbons. But offshore exploration is set to begin in the next couple of years on Namibia's shelf, and they do potentially have between 5 and 12 billion barrels out there. Now sticking offshore and up to the West African coast. For the combined offshore area shared by Mauritania and Senegal, there's likely between 6 and 15 billion barrels, of which about a billion and a half has been discovered already, mostly offshore of Senegal for the moment. The other offshore area in the west, right to the south of them, is shared between Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, Liberia, and Sierra Leone, and is untouched compared to the others, potentially holding a bit less, maybe between 4 and 10 billion barrels. Then we move on to the interior onshore, to the somewhat large, enclosed, low-lying desert region shared between Mali and Mauritania. An area that's remained pretty untouched, uh, with a few exceptions in Mauritania, unfortunately due to those two nations' uh, troubled politics. But being similar to, and right next to, the other North African onshore basins, I have my suspicions that area is probably harboring a bit. I'd call anywhere between 15 and 40 billion barrels under that section of desert. And jumping up to Europe, we have the now open to development UK Western Offshore and Irish Offshore Shelf Waters. While not having the same initial setup as the North Sea at first glance, this area still does harbor a bit of moderate potential, expecting a hopeful 8 billion barrels potentially on the low end, and as much as 18 on the high end. Plus, while we're still in Europe, we're going to skip over to what I call European Alaska, Norway. And I actually, despite their small population, have a surprisingly large number of viewers from Norway. Norway had quite a bit of oil in the past, and actually still does, far out there, with a gargantuan amount of unexplored oil and gas territory, from their mid-offshore shelf to the Barents Sea and all the way up through their Arctic waters, even up to and past their far-owned island of Svalbard. Norway, I'm pretty confident, 
uh, across all of that still unexplored territory has another 20 to 45 billion barrels out there. And since we're right here, we might as well slide back over to Russia and deal with Russia's Arctic waters, of which they have several different regions, the nearest of which stretches up pretty far north and has a hopeful prospect of 15 to 30 billion barrels. The second is semi-enclosed by the large Arctic island of Novaya Zimla, the same island on which the, uh, the Tsar Boma was detonated. And despite being a smaller region, the semi-enclosure aspect lets it end up with a between 12 and 24 billion potential barrels. And their third and most eastern Arctic waters is also a smaller region than their western one, but is somewhat connected to, or at least nearby, to the prolific Alaska and likely prolific Canadian Arctic. So it does come off with a relatively decent potential, coming in at potentially 20 to 35 billion barrels. Now we're going to make the long jump down to South America, where we have the enormous, now open, offshore Argentina territory. When I mentioned in a previous video, the link should appear to that, one of the weekly energy and resource updates. You can catch one of those every week, usually on Saturday. But that was mentioned in this one here, that I suspect Argentina's offshore region may actually hold anywhere from 15 up to as much on a less likely end, but still possible, of 45 billion barrels. To the north of them, though, we have the well-known prolific area of offshore southern Brazil. More than their fair share has been found out there over time, and it's still not even completely explored. Their southern offshore probably still has another 10 to 20 billion barrels out there remaining. In the north of the country, they have another less tapped offshore area that connects with the low-lying mouth and river delta of the Amazon River, while some of it, the onshore part, may not end up getting touched because it's onshore and under part of the Amazon. I feel the area likely has probably between 15 and 30. And then, a bit farther up north, we have the pretty much untouched offshore region stretching out from Nicaragua and Honduras a small sort of arrowhead shelf stretching out into the Caribbean. Not really likely to hold all that much, and thusly there's never really been any huge interest in it. And what interest has cropped up has sort of uh, been dissuaded by Nicaraguan government corruption. But one way or another, that offshore area uh, probably does have between 5 and 12 billion barrels. And narrowing down to the only few zones left, we return to North America to the U.S. East Coast continental shelf. A bit underestimated by some agencies and drastically overestimated uh, by super patriotic infinite oil people. Well, whether or not anything ever actually ends up going on out there, that long stretch of water, it's probably going to hold a total somewhere between 8 and 24 billion. Now just north from there, we have the partially explored East Canadian offshore, primarily off of Newfoundland and Labrador, an area that's probably still likely to hold a, another 5 billion barrels, maybe a bit more. And just north of that, we have one of the areas I'm having the highest expectations for. Baffin Bay. Everything from its northernmost reaches, through the basin itself, and even the mouth of the bay. It all has extremely promising setup. My placement is honestly anywhere from 35 to 80 billion barrels. Now any development in Baffin Bay is going to be up to future governments of Canada and Denmark. Over on the eastern side of Greenland, we have this more open area shared between them and Iceland that even though it's open, it still does have some decent potential to it. Nowhere near the uh, level of Baffin Bay, however. Baffin Bay is, I'm feeling, going to be the, uh, the 
cane of the Arctic, so to speak. Or the Queen, if you prefer. But this joint, shallow Greenland-Iceland area does still hold uh, a potential for anywhere from 6 to 24 billion barrels. And the second to last area we have is the northern offshore Greenland shelf, certainly among some of the farthest reaches of where we might inevitably be going, uh, depending on how desperate we inevitably get, and if we live long enough to go there. And harboring the potential promise along its stretch for a range of between 6 and 22 billion barrels. And finally, coming full circle right back next to where we started, Alaska's gigantic neighbor, the Canadian Arctic. Quite the vast array of frigid hydrocarbon promise and mineral and metal deposit promises, but that's a story for another time. From onshore to great swaths of offshore to the many channels in between the isles, the enormity of the Canadian Arctic is potentially hiding somewhere between 30 and maybe as high as 100 billion barrels, spread out, of course, over a very vast area. All right, so that's it. That's uh, the entire comb over of the Earth's surface. We're not including Antarctica in this one, because in Antarctica, uh, we don't know all that much, so the uncertainties and all the variables are kind of way too strong. So excluding Antarctica offshore, we have most likely a remaining amount of undiscovered petroleum hovering between a decently sized range of about 400 billion to a little over a trillion barrels. All of which, no matter how much it actually is, would obviously not uh, be discovered at once, nor be extractable at once. Peak oil, for anyone who's thinking of that, uh, has nothing to do with actual amounts. That's It has everything to do with what kind of actually matters, which is the available rate of extraction. Now, we did a separate video that a link is appearing to now uh, that's equally as important, where we have various graphs and projections for future oil production rates globally and for several countries. So go see that to look into that subject in particular separately. So that's it for this video. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed. And if you want to help me financially, which should be enormously appreciated since I just lost my health insurance, my paypal.me inserts along with links to uh, my Patreon and my Redbubble shop are in the description below. Any donators of any significant amount, whenever I visit my parents again, I will carve your name into a giant chunk of coal. That's about the best I can do for you. So, God bless the lives of all of you, and I will see you all around next time.